Hey, hey, and welcome to another Tech Tuesday. This is Chad from Ascension Worship, and this week we're talking about transitions. Hey, 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 what do you say? Yes, it's that time again. It's Tech Tuesday. So this week we're talking about transitions, and specifically how to get from low to no volume up to whatever your full volume is going to be. So what I would call immersive sound, the level that is loud enough for your crowd to be engaged and participating. They can sing, they can clap, and, uh, and not feel like they're overshadowing the band, not feel like the band is so loud that they're not participating. That's kind of what we're shooting for on here. If that's a new concept to you, uh, check out some of the previous videos I've done on that. Um, but I'd say get rid of your decibel readers, to start with, get your level right that people can sing to and clap to, and then use your decibel reader to figure out where that is. And that's going to be different for every church. So enough about that. Um, <laughs> we're going to talk about how to get there in your service, because if you're not using transitions, if you're just immediately hopping into this level, people will perceive it as loud, even if it's not really that loud, because the human ear reacts to sudden changes in sound um, poorly. So that's why today we're talking about transitions. Um, so a couple of notes um, before we even get started, you'll see on the screen, I have a PDF. This is a, a free resource that I will leave a link in the description. You can download it and have it for your team. So we're just gonna talk through that. Before I get into that, a couple things to note. Uh, one, when you're using your transitions, this is just a guideline, always be thinking, what is coming next? So I'm in my song, is the next thing going to be someone else leading that song? Is there going to be an electric guitar part? Is the pastor going to come up? Are we going into a video? Always teach yourself to think what is coming next because there's so many elements to a mixer that you can get lost really easily. So always be thinking ahead. Uh, two, I mentioned earlier, but avoid sudden changes in volume, either up or down. The human ear does not like that. If there's a sudden change upward, people will perceive it as loud, even if maybe it's actually not. If there's a sudden change downward, people will perceive it as being really quiet. And again, and it might not be. Um, so that's why we want to transition in and out of these different levels of our service. And three, very important. I mentioned this a lot in videos. I mentioned it a lot when I do personal training, um, but use your groups. Um, Groups or DCAs, whatever you have available on your board will really help you to have a visual reference um, for where everything's going to sit. Um, so like, especially if you're in an older church where maybe the soundboard's in a less than ideal position, you spent your time during rehearsal going out in the crowd, making sure the volume is right, making sure the balance is right. Well, now you're back up in the balcony and it sounds horrible. If you don't have a visual reference, you'll start mixing to that location. Whereas you've already done all that work on the floor. If you have a visual reference, you can at least get close um, to what you had during rehearsal and then just kind of adjust it from there. So let's put that into practice again, right before we go into uh, um, our transitions, I want to show you during rehearsal kind of what I would set. So on here, you can see this is an X32 scene um, from a summer camp we did a while back. Uh, I've got my DCA groups here. So I've got drums and bass, electric guitars, keys and loops, the entire band. So this includes all these things and things like the acoustic guitar, um, anything else that doesn't have its own group. The whole band is in here, my worship leaders, and then all my other vocals. So my backing vocals, um, and this is just for the worship set. So if you notice, all my DCAs are set at zero. Um, and all my individual channels are wherever they need to be in volume to make this work. So I get the right amount of volume with these at zero. And so the idea is that during a random, if you were just to pick a chorus where everything's going at full blast, these levels here are going to sound at least really close to a finished mix. Um, per song, I might adjust some things up and down slightly. But this is kind of what my goal has been is to shoot for this. So during rehearsal, you get this working right. And then we've got something we can work with very easily when we get into our transitions. So 
let's say we finish rehearsal. People are about to start arriving to the church. First thing we're going to do is we're turning down these three DCAs here. So my band and all my vocals. So effectively, um, in this case, we're using in ears. So effectively, everything is out of the mix now. If you have live stage monitors, go ahead and mute these as well. Um, but for today, I'm talking about if we had in ears. Um, so band is down. And now we get into our transitions. The first uh, transition we have to work with is um, background music. Very, very important. Um, make sure that you're choosing the right kind of background music for the service you're doing. If your church happens to do modern worship, so uh, like Hillsong, Bethel, Passion, Elevate, that, or Elevation, excuse me, that kind of stuff, then um, make sure that you have something that fits in that vibe. Uh, you may be an older sound tech who really likes you know, older rock stuff from back in the day. If it doesn't fit your vibe, you're just going to make that transition awkward. So make sure you pick something that's upbeat, um, relatable to people that are coming in, especially if they're new to church, and have that playing in the background just enough so that people can hear it, kind of get attuned to listening to music uh, in your venue or outside your venue. Uh, if you can have this in your lobby and parking lot, very, very helpful for this transition. Um, but have some background music playing as people arrive just loud enough to where people can still speak over it but it's there. Next is about five minutes before the service is set to start. Uh, a lot of churches now have pre-roll videos or countdown videos. That's really great. If you don't have that, then you can use your background music to create what's called a change of state. This is genius. This is something I learned when I was at college at Hillsong. It's just simply understanding that people react to changes in the envir environment. Excuse me. So, if you went to go see a play or a movie, um, when you first arrive, the back, uh, sorry, the um, house lighting is up a bit. Um, and then right before the movie is going to start or the previews or the plays going to start, whatever it's going to be, uh, usually what will happen is the, excuse me, the back, uh, sorry, the lighting will uh, dim a bit. And you will notice it because it's a change to the environment and it cues you as a human being to know something has changed. Now it's time for us to put aside our individual conversations or looking at our phone, whatever, because now we're coming into doing something together. In this case, watching a movie or watching a play. So in the church context, we want to create an environment where people can come together, eat bagels, drink coffee, whatever your church does, fellowship with one another. But at some point you need to cue them that, hey, now it's time for us to come together and worship Jesus in a corporate worship setting. Um, so a really easy way to do this is just to boost your background music up. So we had a low volume as people were coming in. Now we're boosting it up just enough so that people notice it. Um, so it's a little bit harder to have a conversation over it. We don't want to like um, chase people off with how loud it is, but we want it to become clear that, hey, now it's time to come together. Let's join in and, uh, and get ready for worship. So about five minutes till, boost that up, make that happen. Next, at the one minute mark, um, as we're about to go into your worship set, now's the time where you want to start fading in that music and you are bridging the gap between your background music and your band um, immersive level that you're shooting for. So again, if you went from little to no background music straight into that, people are going to perceive it as being loud because of the transition that you're your body has to go through to hear that. So over that last minute, you can be fading that up um, to bridge that gap. And then the difference won't be staggering, but it'll be musical and dynamic. Whereas from almost no volume, it's going to be just too much. A um, couple notes on this one. Uh, when you do it, make sure before the minute mark that you have more than enough time for that song to finish. Uh, also make sure that it's an upbeat song because if we're going into an upbeat worship set, it's awkward to have that, again, weird transition. Uh, so I like to make sure that the song I pick is longer than the time I have left on the, on the clock um, so that it doesn't end beforehand because those last couple seconds are really awkward if it ends early. So you want to be the one to fade that out as the band gets started. So we're fading this out. Usually during this time too, um, I will, if you have a talk back mic, I'll tell the band, Hey, I'm about to unmute your channels. Make sure you're not playing. Cause I don't want anything embarrassing to happen. 
and then I'll be pushing up my band and my worship leader DCAs here. Um, depending on your crowd will determine if you're going to go all the way to zero um, or a little bit below or a little bit above for when the band gets started. Um, usually I'll have it uh, at zero or slightly below and I'll have the worship leader boosted slightly up because usually they're going to say something to the crowd and maybe the band's kind of playing underneath. Um, so I want that to start down there and then I'll fade it up as the uh, worship leader is done talking. Worship leader comes back down. You see we've come back to zero. This really helps our transitions visually. If your crowd tends to show up late um, and miss some or all the first song, then you probably want to have your band DC a little bit lower, maybe around negative five, so that you are using that first song as a transition to get to your full volume as well. So that if people walk in late, they're not walking into that immersive sound level. And again, it feels loud because they weren't there for the rest of your transition. You can use your first song as a transition if you need to. Um, it also helps if you have, again, um, that music playing in the lobby or the background, because as people walk to the building, that will help them to um, acclimate themselves, because as they get closer, the, the sound is getting louder and fuller. Uh, if you happen to have your band down a little bit, and the first song is usually one of those songs where you're trying to get people clapping and into it, you need to compensate for this and have your drums up a little bit because that kick and snare is going to be really what helps people to feel comfortable clapping along, um, to have a sense of time and not get off and throw the band off, um, which is a hot mess when that happens. Uh, so it's really important that in these transitions, you're watching your crowd and seeing how they react. If there are people sticking their fingers in their ears, you've gone too far. If there are people with their hands by their sides and they're not feeling like they're into it clapping-wise, then you've gone too far um, the other way. If you try and clap and you can't do it, then you need to boost this up. So it's a really good trick. But eventually, by probably song two, you're going to end up back with your DCAs at zero. Um, with each song, as you go through the set, you want to kind of imagine your worship set like a roller coaster. Um, it's a good idea to start songs a little bit lower with your band DCA, and then you've got room to raise up again to that immersive sound level. So that's always going to sound better than starting at zero and then going louder. Cause now you're getting to the point where it's going to be hard for people to worship because the music's too loud. So start low, raise up and each song is a little bit different. So now we get to the point where we need to start thinking about what's coming next. Uh, so in this case, let's imagine that we're either going to go into um, our pastor's going to come on stage or someone's going to come up to uh, go through the announcements. It's important that you know who's going to come on stage, what kind of microphone will they have, um, do they have a strong voice or a weak voice, how is their mic technique, and how loud can that mic go before you start running into feedback issues. Uh, so this is going to be really important um, to know uh, how loud does your band need to be before this transition happens? So if I've got someone coming up who is a um, thin voiced kind of weak sounding person, <laughs> um, then I need to, over that last song, start reducing my band and worship leader levels just a tiny bit. And the idea here is that we are, again, we're bridging the gap. So if our immersive levels here and we've got a really quiet, speaker coming here, that volume, when it drops down, you're going to lose all your energy that you've spent this entire worship set building up. Um, and the person who's speaking is going to sound like they're quiet because uh, that drop in level, the, our ears are still used to the louder level. So if we start slowly reducing our level, not enough to lose energy, but to just bridge that gap, then it's going to feel more comfortable when we come down to our level for the person who's speaking. So we're slowly reducing these things here. We've got our pastor coming up on stage. If the pastor is going to be loud and, um, and, uh, and try and yell over the band because like maybe they're hitting that last chord and going for it, you might want to give the pastor a little boost. Another thing that will really help you is uh, if you have a compressor on your pastor's mic, make sure you know how much that's compressing. If it's set to where it's made to work at a speaking volume, 
then them screaming over band is going to cause it to over compress. And then you're going to be pushing your fader up trying to get the, the pastor loud enough. And you're not going to be able to do it because that compressor is working too well. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll raise my compressor threshold up until the pastor is done being loud and starts to kind of regulate their volume. Then I'll lower that back down. Um, so, so avoid over compressing. This is also a good time once that pastor comes on stage to start removing any unnecessary elements of your worship uh, team. So for example, when the pastor walks out on stage, usually the first thing I'll do is I'll turn off all my backing vocals. Um, because if you have a lot of those, that's just open mics that are picking up sound. They probably have reverb on them as well. So it's just getting harder and harder to have a clean noise floor for your pastor to sit over. So remove your backing vocals. As the band and the pastor start to kind of settle down, you can start bringing down your band, always keeping the pastor as the top thing in the mix. And then we can start bringing our pastor down a little bit. We can have our worship leaders down, but not out, because if they go back into a song, you don't want to have to fade them from zero. You want to have them just behind the pastor in the mix. And then if you know that you're done, you can start removing things like the guitars, the drum and bass, um, as they're leaving the stage. And so leave your transitionary elements up. So usually it's going to be keys or acoustic guitar. Um, so usually I'll drop those down, bring my band down. And, um, but I'm not going to completely mute this because I want to be able to have those up just a tiny bit if I don't see when they come out later after the pastor is done. Um, so pastor's on stage, all of our vocals are out, our band level is down, our keys level is just slightly down just to be safe, uh, and now we're into the message. If at the end of your message the band comes back up, Again, we've got our keys level up just a tiny bit. Once the keyboard starts playing, we can fade in our band DCA to, uh, to get a little bit more level so we can kind of feel out where that's going to be. If other instruments start coming on the stage, we can start blending those in as well, kind of getting things back towards zero, at least with our individual DCAs. Um, and then if they go into a song, then you can go and have these levels up but I would suggest that you not go straight to your unity level, um, your immersive sound level, because you need to, again, be watching the crowd. So this time you want to see if there's anyone down front. Uh, if you have subs on the floor and they're praying in front of those, you don't want to have your band kicking. Be aware if people are doing communion or praying or, you know, the pastor is speaking with them. These are very important ministry times. So you need to be aware of that. But as people transition out of that, they go back to their seats Usually the worship leader will say, you know, let's stand up and sing. That would be a good time for you to then bring your levels back or close to zero. Um, so we're back into our immersive sound level where people can participate because that's what we're trying to do at this point in time. Um, so as that song is going, go ahead and start some background music uh, with your fader down so that as soon as the last song is over, you can fade that in, fade your band out. And now we're back to the start. We've got background music as people are milling around, um, but everything else is done. And that's it. So really, really helpful to keep these things in mind. The more you practice these, the more they'll come second nature. But always be thinking, what is coming next? And that will help you out so much when it comes to this. And just try to make these, these big gaps and changes in volume, make them happen over time, not immediate, or else people will assume that it's loud, even if it's really not. And again, use your groups. It will help you out so much. Hope this has been helpful for you. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them below in our YouTube, uh, or you can email me at techtuesday at ascensionworship.com, and we love to help you out any way we can. Until next time. Have a great week. Again, this is Chad from Ascension Worship. I hope this has been helpful for you and your team. Come back here every Tuesday for new information.